Infographics are a powerful tool that can help you communicate complex information in a way that is easy to understand and visually appealing. They combine words and visuals to present information clearly, quickly, and in an engaging way. With the ability to emphasize key statistics and break up large blocks of text, infographics can help improve brand awareness and capture the attention of your audience. I recently conceptualized a totally new style of infographic using Affinity Designer. This tool is intuitive and easy to learn, making it the perfect choice for anyone looking to create stunning infographics that will captivate their audience. Repeating elements is a fundamental technique used in creating beautiful patterns across various forms of art and design. Overall, the beauty of a pattern lies in the careful balance of repetition and variation. Too much repetition can lead to monotony, while too much variation can disrupt the pattern's harmony. Skillful use of repetition, combined with thoughtful design and creative choices, is the key to creating stunning and visually captivating patterns. In today's video, I am going to create a beautiful pattern concept for you guys so that you can learn and use such styles in your documents and presentations. I have applied gray background so that I can use white colored shapes easily. A rounded rectangle will be the main shape for this design layout. I want the corners to be rounded. Make sure you are watching this tutorial till the end. Now I am going to use the technique which I had discussed in the beginning of the video of repeating the shapes. So. Here you will see how I am going to repeat the shapes. Firstly, I have added this one more rectangle with rounded corners at the center. You can also duplicate the original rectangle shape. In Affinity Designer the shortcut for duplicate is Ctrl plus J key on your keyboard. Once the rectangle is at the center, fill the gradient color of your choice. I have placed a color scheme. Please take your time to fill the gradient and make sure it is flowing like a water from one corner to another. It should look good and feel good. I just love gradient colors. Full of life. Now it is the action time. Press Ctrl plus J key on your keyboard to duplicate. Rotate the duplicated shape a bit. Slightly. Then again press Ctrl plus J repeatedly. The pattern will start appearing. Once it covers full circle, stop. Also create one duplicate of the while rectangular background and adjust its transparency. Now it looks great. Now slightly rotate the white rectangle. This has become a complete one module which is a key part of our design. Make sure it is looking good. You can view it by zooming in and see if there is anything which needs to be updated. If everything is fine, just group it together. Now let's do something which will make your design stand apart. This is something which will create a difference and gives a unique taste to your designs. So zoom in and create a duplicate of the topmost rectangle. Now just convert it to curves so that you can see all the vector joints or handles. The idea is to create a glossy layer over this shape. I have cut the rectangle to half by removing the handles. Now I am going to apply the gradient fill in white. Use the white color and create your own style of gradient by using two or three gradient stops. One one stop use white and on the second one use opacity levels to make it more transparent. I want you to learn how to use your imagination to create shapes then transform these into a meaningful layout or pattern for your use. Now I am further doing some finishing on this triangular shape. I am making it more fluidic. How about adding one more gradient stop? Affinity automatically detects the color and opacity levels. You can manually adjust the angle and position of the gradient stop. If it is good to go then you can rotate the shape to achieve the best viewing angle. I am thinking of duplicating this shape and then rotate it by some degrees. You can rotate while pressing shift. This will make your job easy. I think let's duplicate it one more time and rotate it. This looks nice. You can build such amazing textures and styles using colors and patterns. One of the module is complete. You can now group it so that you can move it easily. Create a duplicate and move it to lower right. Shrink it and now I will modify it as you can see in the final output. Well, I do not think any modification is needed here. I am going to place it here. Now I am going to create a connecting shape between the bigger and smaller component. 
This is very easy to design. Simply insert a rectangular shape here. Fill any color for now. Firstly I will customize this shape and then, I will think of the color. For now just place it behind these two grouped shapes. This is the strength of the vector tools that you can customize shapes according to your style and requirements. You can edit the shape from the corners to place it in alignment with the other shapes. Move the corners, adjust the width so that it is aligned properly. It is very easy to do with Affinity Designer. Convert the shape to curves and then you get the power to edit the shape as per your requirement. Now increase the width of the rectangle from the top part as I am aligning it with the group shape. Simple drag the corners to the middle of the group shape on both sides. Now I am adding some curves on both sides of the rectangle. It is also easy, you just need to select the sides of the rectangle and bend them. You can adjust the curves and review by zooming in if the shapes are looking well aligned and there is a proper balance. I think everything is set now. Looking fine. Now you can add the color. Each graphic tool has different ways to fill the colors. Affinity Designer has this gradient fill tool in which you can add gradient stops and change the direction and opacity of each stop. Fill the colors you want. I have used the colors from the palette. Try a mix of different color schemes like light to dark or vice versa. Now to make this more interesting, I am adding some supporting graphics related to technology. I am creating these circuit lines. These are easy to design. Simply use the pen tool to draw a straight line at an angle. Then, change the path of the line by certain angle and then again keep it straight. Change the ends of the line to dots. You can adjust the size of the dots. Draw these randomly and create a pattern. You need to see what looks good here. Try to place the lines at different angles, adjust the spacing, use some light color for the lines. You can add some more shapes like triangles and rectangles as per your requirement. Have you ever wondered why some things in nature look the way they do? Why do snowflakes have six sides? Why do sunflowers have spirals of seeds? Why do zebras have stripes? These are examples of patterns in nature, which are visible regularities of form that occur in the natural world. Patterns in nature can be found in plants, animals, rocks, clouds, stars, and many other phenomena. Some patterns are simple and easy to describe, while others are complex and mysterious. Patterns in nature can sometimes be explained by mathematical models or physical laws. For example, the shape of a snowflake is determined by the way water molecules crystallize when they freeze. The angle between two adjacent water molecules is about 120 degrees, which results in a hexagonal structure. The shape of a sunflower seed head is related to the Fibonacci sequence, a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the previous two. The Fibonacci sequence can be used to generate a spiral pattern that optimizes the packing of seeds in a circular space. Patterns in nature can also have biological or evolutionary functions. For example, the camouflage patterns of animals can help them avoid predators or attract mates. The peacock's tail feathers have eye-like spots that dazzle and impress potential partners. The fractal patterns of trees can help them maximize their exposure to sunlight and air. The spiral patterns of shells can help them grow without changing their shape or proportions. Patterns in nature can inspire us to create art, design, and technology. Many artists have used natural patterns as sources of beauty and creativity. Patterns in nature can also teach us about the universe and ourselves. We can also appreciate the diversity and complexity of life on Earth and beyond. Therefore, it is very important to understand the shapes and patterns as these hold the way we consumer information or signals. Coming back to the tutorial, now I have duplicated the pattern and pasted it on the other side as well. You can paste it across the slide in different sizes as per your requirements. It should look good to you. Now this is our first complete module. Make sure to group the items. I will not duplicate and repeat the shapes in circular motion. In order to achieve it, you have to duplicate this module. Move it upward and rotate it by some degrees, after that press Ctrl plus J key to replicate the duplication. It will create the design. Let's add some text now. It depends upon the content you want to share. 
I am adding some numbers in the form of percentage. You can also add icons or descriptions on the sides. Use a nice font and make sure it is readable. Align it with the center of the circular shape. In Affinity Designer, adding text is very easy. You have to use the type tool to add the text placeholder and then write the text. After that you can change the properties of the written text like font size, color, and justification. I am using white color on the text as the background is dark. You need to give more focus on text as you are designing everything to show the text in a meaningful way. Hope you understand. Now as the text is added, what I can see is that the middle part is weak. It should look a bit heavier and represent the source of power. So I am adding one rectangle shape without any color. Only the border or the outline of the rectangle will be visible. Also the outline will not have solid line border. How about a dotted border? It will look much better. Once it is placed at the center, I will repeat the shape in circular motion using duplication technique with the help of Ctrl plus J, isn't it nice? Let's see how it looks. Meanwhile if you are watching this tutorial, please like, subscribe, share and comment. Your subscription and viewership will help us to create content for you guys. Here you can see, I am editing the outline of the shape to make it dotted. In the Affinity Designer you will find this option called Stroke Setting. Here you can do anything with the outline in terms of controlling its width, corners, edges, flow of dots in terms of spacing and length. Of course it will take some time for you to understand as it is a try and test king of thing. More you will do it and more you will learn. Always, review your designs while designing so that you can visualize what you are doing wrong. Also, do not hesitate to experiment and take bold decisions. The more you try and take out of the box decisions, your designs will look much better. The goal should be deliver the best presentation out there. This is what I follow for all of my presentations. I never create same design or layout again. Now let's start repeating the shapes to create the pattern. It will look like a neural network in a circular pattern representing the source of the power at the center. And, this is what I wanted in this design. As now I have placed the pattern and it looks really good. Now from the layer panel, select the pattern items and group them. Make sure you are selecting the correct layers. Once grouped, you need to move the grouped pattern to bottom as currently, it is overlapping the shapes. It should go behind the design. After you can adjust the opacity of the pattern as currently it is looking a bit heavy and dark. Adjusting the opacity will make it lighter. Now I am going to add a 3D circle at the center. Affinity Designer has this option to create the shapes in 3D. 3D shapes give a new dimension to the overall design. In Affinity Designer under Effects panel you will find this option. Here you can change the settings by moving the slides left to right and see the output. Adjust the lighting on the circle so that it looks good and not too harsh in terms of lighting. Once the circle is in place, create a duplicate copy by pressing Ctrl plus J key and then again go to Effects panel and select the blur. Apply the blur effect and check the settings like opacity. Once you are satisfied place this duplicated circle behind the 3D circle and it will give a sense of depth. So here I am duplicating the circle to create a blurred shape for creating shadow. So guys, the design is almost finished. You can notice I have placed some shapes on both slides to enhance the beauty. You can try such things to further enhance the slides. Hope you like the design and style. Also, I hope you learned something new today. Here is the final output. Please subscribe, like and share your thoughts. I will see you guys in the next video with something more creative and interesting.